Good morning, happy Thursday. I wanna start in here because I wanna show you something and I can't do, I can't show you from outside. What? <laughs> anyway, can we discuss this? Can we not get sweaters like we get pants? Like these jeans are short length jeans, okay? Not petites. I don't like petites. When I was much thinner, <laughs> I liked petites okay. I I've never really liked petite pants because from um, your, your crotch, it's, it's like that long. And my body, my torso is longer and I have short legs. So I like to get jeans that are cut regular, but short. Yeah, so can we not get tops for the ladies who actually need sleeves like this? I mean, to be honest, this sleeve would probably be too short for my friend Megan because she's one of those ladies that the sleeves are never long enough and the jeans are never long enough. And then can we not get sleeves for us? All I know is it's time to go walk the dog. Now then, it's a glorious day. I woke up singing Credence Clearwater Revival. And them old cotton fields back home. When that cotton ball get rotten, you can't pick very much cotton. In them old cotton fields back home close their mailbox because I'm a nice person. <laughs> I'm a nice person, dadgummit. Well, did I sleep? Ish. Now, considering I had prednisone or cortisone or steroids or whatever he put in that shot, I would say I slept pretty dang good. Yeah. Please stand by. Okay, back to my sleep. So, I was not sleepy at all at 10 o'clock and uh, I took Benadryl. He told me yesterday, because I had a bad reaction to prednisone the last time, I, some of y'all might remember. I guess that's what it was, I don't know, but my whole face turned red and like swelled out. And he said yesterday, well, he asked me if that was the first time and I said, yeah. And he said, I can give you a Benadryl now. And I said, no. <laughs> Cause I'll be sleepy. I said, I have Benadryl at home. I'll just wait and see if it does it. So anyway, he said, go ahead and take two or take one anyway later. Well, I took two last night because I thought with the cortisone, prednisone, with the steroids that I probably would have trouble sleeping. So I was gonna take two Benadryl. I didn't get sleepy. And I took a dropper full of CBD oil, which usually helps me relax. Mm. But I finally did go to sleep. It wasn't, I, I don't know, it was probably midnight. And then my girl, my Gracie, she didn't wake up hollering this morning as per usual, no. She came and jumped in the bed at three o'clock, which is fine. However, spiderweb, uh, uh, my chin um she got in the bed but she wanted to be petted okay and she would not let me go back to sleep because she wanted every time I stopped petting her she would start nu nudge nuzzling yeah is that word nuzzling me again under my hand and I was like try to sleep here however my heat kept coming on. And y'all know I like my room cold. Well, it kept heating up my room to the point that it was waking me up. And it was down low. So I don't know, I don't know. Probably the prednisone making me hotter than normal. You know what I'm saying? I'm hotter than normal. That's a good thing. <laughs> anyway, but I slept decently, but I feel good this morning. No pain thus far. I did have some pain yesterday, of course, from the injection. We'll just hope that continues throughout the day. 
if I, you know, uh, I guess I've grown. Hey, don't awaken no demons under that. Don't awaken the demons from under there because I don't know what lives under there. Don't stand too close to her when she starts scratching off. Sheesh. What was I talking about? I don't know. All I'm saying is, I feel good and I'm not hurting. Praise be to Jesus. I think I left it too wide open yesterday because I said, I hope it don't hurt. And then a lot of people were telling me that epidurals don't really hurt that bad. And I've had, I, I can't even count how many epidurals I've had in my life. Probably the first one was 99, 2000, back there in the 1900s or the year of our Lord, 2000. I had a herniated disc from working out. <laughs> that was back in the day when I used to work out six days a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had the epidural and I went to sleep for it. So I was asleep for the first one. So I don't know if it hurt or not. Well, I could have up to three, right? I went back two weeks later to have the second one because he said, we'll do this one and then come back in two weeks, we'll do another one. And then if you need the third one, we'll do the third one. And I was like, cool, no problem with the first one. Second one, I go in, they give me the cocktail, you know, the cocktail. I didn't go to sleep. I did not go to sleep. They're rolling me down the hall. I'm like, um, um, excuse me, but I'm not asleep. In case you can't tell, I'm not asleep. And she goes, well, that's okay. We can do it anyway. Uh, and that was my second one. So I was really afraid, you know, cause I was like, because I knew when I woke up from the first one, I was very sore. Because I don't know if they deadened it then like they do now. I don't know, but I remember it like it was 24 years ago. The doctor's sitting over in this chair reading the paper. And I'm laying on my stomach and they're putting this big block thing under my pelvic region to get my butt up in the air. And I looked at the doctor who I may or may not have had a crush on because he was adorable. <laughs> and I said, hi, I'm not asleep. He said, hi, I'm not either. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I want to be. He was like, I want to be too. And I was like, he said, you'll be fine. And I was like, <laughs> well, a few minutes later, it started kicking in. Now, I didn't go to sleep sleep. Like, I was alert, eyes looking around while they were doing it. And then they were done. Well, about that time, I guess the silliness kicked in, if y'all can imagine such a thing. And they started rolling me out. My mom was in the recovery area. The person in... Please stand by. Alrighty. So, the person who was in the next little bed over there was a curtain between us was my former lieutenant from the police department and his wife she was having the epidural so we had all been laughing and cutting up before they rolled me in yeah it used to be like a surgery to get an epidural and now it's like i just drive myself and lay on the table wide awake talking about soccer or music or whatever with the doctor He's so good. He really doesn't cause any, I mean, that first pinch of the needle is about all I felt until that last push. Oh, dang, I need to go get gas. Ugh. Well, I'll get it later. That's fine. I'm not quite on empty. I got 60 miles to empty and it's only like four miles to work. <laughs> I got plenty of gas. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, there's a whole entire table in the road. Uh, uh, please stand by. I got my jeans dirty. <laughs> I guess somebody was taking it somewhere. 
I mean, it's not in good condition, but I guess it fell off their truck or something, but it was right here where I need to pull out into the road. So I just pulled it over to the side. It's, I mean, does it matter what it looks like? <laughs> it had these metal legs that kind of collapsed. I don't know, it's like an industrial, but coffee table height. Very weird little thing. And then this woman drove by looking like, what's that in the road? And I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna pull it over here off the road. So if you wanna come back and get it, come on. I don't want it. I'm just, I just wanna get it out of my way <laughs> so I can pull out into the road. Yes, oh, the sky is beautiful this morning. <sighs> anyway, they pulled me out of that room. They're rolling me down the hall and I, apparently the medicine kicked in because I started yelling, Mama! Mama! <laughs> I could hear her laughing. I could almost hear Lieutenant Davis laughing because he was one of those quiet laugh snort people. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of laughed like my pawpaw. Yeah. And then I started yelling, he had my naked butt up in the air. I didn't go to sleep. I mean, all the way down the hall, I was yelling. Of course, I went to sleep. When they rolled me back in the room, I had me a nice little nap. I mean, it probably wasn't that long, but when I woke up, my mom was staring at me like I was cuckoo, and she was like, you okay? And I was like, yeah, why? <laughs> I didn't remember doing it. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Apparently, the medicine kicked in too late. But I, thankfully, I did not have to have a third one that time. It, the second one fixed me. But ever since I've broken my back, I've had countless, countless epidurals. But sometimes I go in for shots and they're not epidurals. They're uh, facet joint injections. They're um, burning the nerves. They're all these things, all these shots that, that I've had. So that one shot that I had, he was doing something with the nerve and it was causing my legs to have a life of their own. Mm. Yeah, that's the one that hurt. I mean, it hurt, hurt. I do not cry when I am in pain. I didn't even cry when I broke my back. I cried the next day when I went to the doctor and he told me, nothing's broken you just you know your muscles he everything to him was either arthritis or your muscles well i mean he was a rheumatologist <laughs> or as my friend kim calls him rheumatoidologist <laughs> i'm like <laughs> he's a rheumatologist he decided to inject my already sore back with about 12 steroid injections which i read later I mean, I, I don't know if it was steroids, but he took a needle and he, he did. He punctured me like 12 times in my back that was already like absolutely killing me. That made me cry, but that made me cry more from anger because I knew something was broken. I don't know about you, but I have always been able to tell if something's actually broken when it happens yeah because there's something there's i don't know there's something in your body that's like eh, eh, eh. you've broken something <laughs> anyway i went to the doctor the next day i got in to see the orthopedist and he told me nothing was broken he was like well don't look like anything's broken and i said no no mm -mm. something is broken and maybe you need to redo the x-ray because that's what the last doctor said but something's broken and then i told him of issues that i was having like um i broke my l1 nerves in the l1 region affect your bladder and bowels mm -hmm. and when i told him about that he said mm, hold on and he turns around and he walks back out there and looks at the x-ray and he comes back in and he said, you're right, you cracked your back. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Trust me. When I fell, I felt it. Yeah, I felt that break, that breakage. I fell on ice for all my new people. And I sat down real hard on my bum, but that wasn't the end of it. <laughs> because I was like Red Bull and I grew wings. And it was not like those funny ice videos where they're slipping and sliding all over the place. No, mm -mm. one second I was on my feet and the next second I was on my butt and then I flew up in the air and then I came down flat and I just laid there and my first thought was, well, at least you're laying on ice, so that's good. I didn't even cry, but I tell you what, Charlie was in the house and he could see me through the window in the living room. He could see me laying on ice. I thought that dog was going to tear that window out because he wanted to get to me. Yeah, poor little baby. He's like, my mama's hurt and I need to get to her. And then I was like, okay, you gotta get back in the house because the driveway is apparently a solid sheet of ice. And I didn't even want to call an ambulance, a bumper lance to come get me because I was, I could just see all those videos of the paramedics trying to carry me to the ambulance and them falling and me falling again. And to be quite honest, I didn't want to move. Mm -mm. I just used my experience from physical therapy from my herniated disc and log rolled myself over and crawled back in the house. I had shopping bags. I was going to the grocery store and them shopping bags went all over the driveway and I just left them. All I grabbed was my purse as I slithered along the icy driveway. I want y'all to laugh at this, okay? I'm telling it in a way to make you laugh, not feel sorry for me because it don't do no good to feel sorry for me. You know what I'm saying? I tell y'all this stuff to make you laugh. Anyway, I was slithering along the driveway like a little snake until I got to the stairs and then I kind of crawled up and grabbed hold of the door and I was able to pull myself up and crawl myself back in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I pretty much laid on the couch for the rest of the day and didn't move uh, except to do what I needed to do, which did I mention that L1 and the bladder? It makes you feel like you have to go every two seconds. So that's lovely when you can hardly move. But Charlie was so good, so good. He did his business outside, out back that day. And the next day I put his leash on him and we walked out front and I walked to the end of my yard and I turned around and came back. And then the next day we did the same thing. And then the next day I walked a little bit further and the doctor was like, that was the best thing you could have done was to get up and walk because so many people, they don't want to move and they lay there and then they get so stiff. Yeah, it doesn't do you any good. I was like, well, <laughs> sir, doctor, sir, I was raised by Shirley and Shirley, I would come home after having surgery on my like my gallbladder or even a couple of days into a sickness she'd be like you need to get up get up start walking around you can't just lay here <laughs> so the day after i had my gallbladder surgery i was walking all over the house i stayed with her so anyway i'm at work i'll be back now then end of the day i'm home I just want to finish off this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, I love you. Jesus loves you. I hope he's coming back soon because these people will be crazy. And I will talk to you on the next Tracy Tries, which will be tomorrow, good Lord willing. Toodles, manoodles, and stay silly, my friends. Goodbye.